my dream for this channel is to one day report on SpaceX's BFR's first mission to Mars, which will involve sending two cargo ships to the Red Planet. I can't wait to make videos about SpaceX's search for water resources and talk about all the hazards that they identify on Mars. And I can imagine making videos about SpaceX placing power, mining, and life support infrastructure on Mars, which they will use on future flights. That would be so cool. And according to Musk, he believes that the BFR's first mission to Mars may possibly happen in 2022. It's hard to imagine SpaceX developing a 106 meter long reusable rocket with the payload capacity of 150,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit in just four years. But I feel a little better knowing that SpaceX may receive government funding for the development of the BFR. On November 17th, SpaceX President Gwen Shotwell spoke at the 2017 New Space Europe Conference in Luxembourg. Shotwell said that SpaceX expects to receive additional funding from the US government for the BFR. She is most likely talking about the US Air Force's Evolved Expendable Launch Vehicle Program, or EELV. I made a video covering the backstory behind the EELV, so if you want to learn more about that, click on the notification card at the top of the screen. Alright, there are new details about the EELV since I first covered the topic back in November. And we now know what to expect from the program moving forward. You see, the Air Force wants their national security space missions to be launched by all American launch vehicles. And they plan to fund significant portions of the development cost of three launch vehicles. And this is a huge, huge deal that will have a tremendous impact on the future of the commercial space industry. The deadline for submissions to bid for an EELV contract was on November 20th. Let's take a quick look at the next generation rockets that are in the running or possibly in the running for an EELV contract. First is Orbital ATK's Next Generation Launcher, or NGL. The NGL is a three-stage rocket capable of launching up to over 10,000 kilograms to a geosynchronous transfer orbit, or GTO. While it's really nice to see Orbital ATK break into the intermediate and heavy class, which is a great achievement, it's disappointing to see that they're not pushing the envelope and pursuing reusability. Next is the ULA's Vulcan. The Vulcan is a two-stage rocket capable of launching 23,000 kilograms to GTO. The Vulcan will be partially reusable because they plan to recover the main engine with a heat shield and parachute. Although this is not as compelling as landing a booster, at least the ULA is taking a step toward reusability. The Vulcan is scheduled to be completed by mid-2020. Third is Blue Origin's New Glenn. The New Glenn is a two-stage or three-stage rocket capable of launching 13,000 kilograms to GTO, and its first stage is reusable and should be completed by 2020. I made a video covering the new Glenn in more detail, so if you want to learn more, click on the notification card. Alright, and lastly is the BFR. So far, Orbital ATK and the ULA are the only ones who have confirmed their bids. According to Aviation Week, SpaceX and Blue Origin have not confirmed their submissions yet, but are considered wild cards in the competition. But with the Air Force willing to subsidize three launch vehicles, it's a safe bet that SpaceX did indeed submit a bid. Right now, the submissions are being reviewed and negotiations should begin in March, and then there should be formalized agreements signed by July. So we should be able to confirm whether or not SpaceX will receive government funding for the BFR by July. There are two phases of the competition. The first phase will consist of the three selected companies and rockets, which the Air Force will subsidize the development of the launch vehicle prototypes through fiscal year 2020. And then the Air Force will drop one of the companies and rockets in the second phase, and the remaining two rockets will compete for launch missions. The Air Force goal is to be able to launch a medium payload into polar orbit by 2021 using a next generation EELV launch vehicle. Then they want to be able to launch a heavy payload into polar orbit by 2024 or 2025. And then by 2026, they want to be able to launch a heavy payload into geostationary orbit. So if SpaceX is selected, they will have an even earlier completion target by a whole year, which I think would be really cool because SpaceX would have to really get into gear and build the prototype quickly. And I don't know about you, I want to see the BFR as soon as possible. 
So I really, really hope SpaceX receives government funding for the BFR. And don't worry, once I find out whether or not SpaceX receives government funding for the BFR, I will definitely make a video right away. Alright, that's all I have for now. I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like. And if you want to know how cool life will be like in the future, join the Neoscribe tribe and subscribe. I am Neoscribe and this is the end of our journey.